This is the small grow box I used to start off plants. It's pretty simple, there are two fans. The top pushes hot air out and the bottom pulls fresh air in. I built it mostly as a test space for the pie grow, so I've got all the electronics in this easy to access drawer at the top. There's a Pi 3B which controls the fans and all these plug boards. If I put it out and open it up, you can see it properly. I could have used single plugs, but this lets me experiment with anything I want to. There's a motor control in here for the fans, so I can vary their speed. The wires then go around the back and through this hole. I put some hooks in the ceiling to help get cables out of the way and to allow me to hang the light. I've experimented with a few, and at the moment I'm using a small 45 watt CFL. It fits nicely in the space and produces a good amount of light for the small area. My plan is to make another identical box beside it, so I can do some comparisons using different lights, temperature settings and whatever's interesting. First I want to get this one perfected though. I've just added this little addition. It's a plate which protects the permanent wires and which has a hole that I can feed power cables through. The lid closes it off to stop too much heat escaping at night and protect against flying insects being drawn in because of the light. I'll put the design up on my Thingiverse if anyone wants to use or modify it. The power then plugs into one of these extension boards which are controlled by this relay unit underneath. It's hard to see with everything plugged in but it looks exactly like this one. Currently I've only got a BME280 connected but that's fine because it's all I need to control the temperature and humidity. I can always attach other sensors when I need them. So over on my laptop I'll show you how it's all set up. When I connect, it will tell me I'm linked with Bluebox and open the Setup tab. This has been switched out with the new one in the next version of the GUI, but it all works the same way. The devices, such as the lamp, plug into the sockets, which are controlled by relays. The lamp has its own special controls to make it easier to set its duration, but the relay which controls it is set in this table. If we double click, it brings up the dialog box where we can change which GPO pin it's connected to, or the direction of the wiring. Which side of the relay you wire to determines if the device is turned on or off initially. We just need to tell it which way we wired. In the lamp controls we can set the time we want to turn it on and when to turn it off. This simply sets a cron job to trigger the appropriate relay at the set time and we can do this for any of the relays but for devices like a heater or fan it might be more useful to have it turn on and off automatically depending on the temperature. We can do that over in the sensor panel. I've got my sensor set to read every one minute and to write to a file called BME280log. I've also set up some triggers linked to the same log. The script triggerwatcher.py keeps an eye on the log and any time it's added to it reads the new data and checks to see if any of the trigger conditions have been met. If so, it runs the appropriate command. I've already got quite a few triggers using this one sensor's log. Most are just sending me notifications when temperature humidity goes to extremes, but I'm also turning the heater on and off and controlling the speed of the fans. Currently it turns the fans on at half power when the temperature gets above 23 degrees, and I'm going to add another to turn it all the way up in situations where it's not enough and the temperature continues to rise. To create one we just need to press add trigger. The dialog box lets us select which log we want to use and which field in that log. We want to trigger when it's above the value, and I think 25 degrees should be a good threshold. We need to give the condition a unique name, I call it top fan very hot. We also have to tell it that this is the on state for this condition, but it's just internal information. I'll get rid of this in future versions. Finally, we need to tell it what to do when the trigger condition is met. I'll add a tool to make this simpler, but at the moment we need to write in the command that will be run on the Pi. To control the fan we use a script in the switches folder called HWPWM set which is the hardware pulse width modulation setting tool. So I write that in there with the flags to tell it which pin to set and its percentage value. I'm setting this to 100%. Each trigger requires a mirror to turn it off when it goes back down below the value so I tick that to create it automatically. This is another thing that will be tidied away when this section gets updated. Well, we can just create the mirror and we go into that we see that it triggers when the temperature goes below our threshold and it sets the condition to off. We can change the threshold value if we want so it will stay on until it falls to say 24 degrees. 
We also need to change the command it runs. I'm going to drop it back down to 50% power and if the temperature continues to fall after that it will shut off when the other trigger detects it's below 23. On the temperature graph we can see that before I had the fan active it was getting up to about 26 degrees but then once the fan trigger is enabled the maximum temperature stabilizes around the 23 degree mark. Zooming in and looking at just two hours of activity we can see as soon as the temperature goes above our trigger's threshold it enables the fan which starts to pull the temperature down. When it's below 23 it shuts off again and things warm up until they're back at the threshold for the cycle to repeat. Currently every few minutes the fan's running at about 50% power for one or occasionally two minutes then shutting off. As the ambient temperature outside the box rises we should expect to see the fan coming on more regularly until it's unable to pull it back down below 23 and then if it rises to 25 it will kick into full power and bring it right down to 24. So there's my little blue test box. I'm going to 3D print some covers for those fans at some point but for now I'm just going to monitor it when it grows some coriander. If it's all good I'll make another box and do some comparisons. One thing I'd really like to test is not just the different temperatures but also different variations of temperature. I was reading that cold nights make tall plants so it'd be fun to try growing one lot with a very narrow temperature range and another with a much wider fluctuation. I set some cameras up in each when I do to make a video documenting the differences so like and subscribe if you want to see that. I'm going to get back to working on my self watering system for the windowsill pie grow so hopefully that video will be up soon too. Thanks everybody and uh, see you soon.